Last week, Wizards of the Coast got in touch with me and sent over something quite interesting. So let's find out what it is. Hello and welcome to Life Begins at 20. My name is Mark and thank you so much for joining me. Now, as I mentioned at the top of the video, Wizards of the Coast got in touch with me last week and offered me the opportunity to uh, see a set earlier than everybody else, really. So they set me a little bit of a challenge and we got sent over six booster packs of Unstable. Now, to be perfectly honest, I haven't actually looked too much into, into this set. I mean, I do love the artwork of these boosters. They look absolutely great. Um, it looks like a really, really interesting set. So they set me the challenge of building a deck with those six booster packs and seeing what we get inside. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So we've got our six awesome packs here of Unstable. I mean, the lands for sure are one of the most exciting things about this set. They look absolutely stunning. And again, I would just like to thank Dan from Wizard of the Coast for sending these over to us this early because it's been really, really cool. And I've noticed a few other of uh, the UK MTG content creators also getting hold of a few of these packs, which I think is really, really cool, especially considering what's been going on in the community recently. So definitely excited to see what we've got in this pack. And I'm afraid to say... I have n haven't got that much of an idea of what actually goes on in these sets, so bear with me. Uh, this is going to be going through this, but, you know, reasonably quickly. But obviously, I still need to figure out uh, what is going on. So we're going to start off with uh, with work a double uh, sorcery for two and two red. Assemble two contraptions. So yeah, obviously the contraptions are something quite interesting uh, going on in the set. And I do quite like the silver borders. I mean, it's the first actual unset that I've actually opened up myself. So pretty cool there. Uh, next up, we've got Sacrifice Play. So for two and white, it's an instant. A person outside the game chooses an attacking or blocking creature, target opponent controls. That player sacrifices that creature. That's really cool. I do like the fact that, you know, really fun set here, especially if you're going to be playing with like multiple people or in a surroundings with drafting with a lot of people you can kind of you know the removal there is actually going to be more interactive with other players as well which is really cool uh first uh, first of our host creatures we've got now which is dirty rat <laughs> so i do like these because obviously you can get the augment on one side of the card to make it even more powerful which is pretty cool so again this is just starting off with for one and a black it's a one one and target opponent discards a card which is still pretty decent to be perfectly honest but um yeah when you've got the augment on there to make it even better. Uh, next up, we've got Box of Free Range Goblins. Uh, so, four, four and two red. Roll a six sided die, create a number of one red goblin creature tokens equal to that result. That's pretty cool, especially I think in the set as well. There are cards that actually allow you to increase the dice rolls as well. Uh, next up, we've got Old Guard. This is actually a really cool art. Uh, I really do like that. So for one and a white, it's a 2-1 artifact creature. Uh, for one and tapping it, you can tap target creature without reminder text. That's actually pretty cool as well. So it's almost like you're getting yourself, you know, your Gideon's Lawkeeper and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's only if it doesn't have reminder text. So that's actually really cool. Uh, Wall of Fortune's up next. So for one and a blue, you've got a Nort 4 Defender, and you may tap an untapped wall you control that have any player re-roll a dice if that player rolls. So that's actually pretty cool. So say, for example, you know, they opened up a uh, box of free-range goblins, they roll a six, you could tap a wall, and then they end up getting a one, and it makes it a little bit more fun to interact with there. Uh, Ground Pounder, so it's a 2-2 two, two for two, which is pretty decent. Um, and then for three and a green, roll a six-sided die. Ground Pounder gets plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is the result. And whenever you roll a five or higher on a die, it also gains trample to the end of turn. That's actually that's actually pretty cool. I mean, I do like the interaction you've got there with dice as well. Uh, we've got one of the lands here in Secret Base. So you can either tap it for a colorless or tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool and only spend this mana to create a spell that shares a watermark with Secret Base. So you could only have if you can see there i'll try and get this into focus uh yeah it'll be whatever the watermark there is it can only be for secret base so that's quite cool uh first of the uncommons is cogmenter so for one it's a flying one one artifact creature 
and you can pay for to reassemble target contraption you control. That's actually pretty cool as well. But I mean, a one-one fly for one is pretty decent as well. Uh, next up, we've got an old-fashioned vampire. So for three and two black, is a flying three-three, and it gets plus two plus two, and has death touch as long as it's dark outside. I really do like that. Um, yeah, just being dark outside would be quite a quite a cool little thing to have there. Definitely have to play that deck when it's. I mean, especially this time of year as well. It shouldn't, if you're playing in the evening, it's gonna it's gonna be anyway. Uh, next up, we've got Spy Eye. So for two and two blue, it's a flying one three, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card from that player's library. That's really cool. <laughs> I do really like that actually. Uh, not just you know your typical you know deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card, discard a card, thing, anything. But that, that's really cool. I do like that. And our rare, we've got Serpentine. So again, this is one of the augment cards. So. What this will end up doing, if I just grab Dirty Rat quickly, uh, you will then cast this. Oh, well, we know what the next card is. So, um, so when it you create that Serpentine Rat, then so it's a one-one. But it also, whenever a land enters control, enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card. So that's how those two work there. And you can augment it for two and a green. Anytime you can cast a sorcery, it then becomes a four-four. Uh, and that's just really cool. And to be honest, that's really strong. That is really strong, having both of those things there. So that's really cool. And these are just absolutely stunning. Absolutely love these arts for full. Art. I mean, if I could get a whole cube of just these arts, I would. I mean, they don't. They don't quite look like typical Magic the Gathering lands, which is actually probably why I really do like them. But no, these are absolutely stunning. And then afterwards, we've got ourselves some contraptions here. So. Optical Optimizer, so it's a contraption, so whenever you crank Optimal Optimizer until the end of the turn, target creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types and gains tap it to draw a card. That's actually pretty cool. Um, that is actually pretty cool. And then we've got Inflation Station, <laughs> that is great artwork. Absolutely great artwork. Um, so whenever you crank Inflation Station, target creature gets plus three, plus three until the end of the turn. I really do like that artwork. I mean, it's, you know, just fantastic. And this is also something that I've been noticing is all of the tokens are actually foil as well. That's really cool. Or you can have a full art version of it on the back, but that is, that is really cool. So yeah, I'm 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 pretty excited about um about this set. I mean, it's, it looks like it's going to be a really really fun set to to draft with. Uh, apologies, I haven't set these up in any kind of order. I'm just you know going to crack them open and uh, to see what goes on there. But no, I'm really really thankful to Dan for sending sending the cards over. And to be perfectly honest, let me know in the comment section as well below whether you're going to be. Um, giving the set a go uh, you're going to be going there to draft it when it comes out because i'd really be interested to see what you all think of of this set because obviously it's not a typical magic set so you know not necessarily for everybody but i think it's be really really fun to have a good draft with uh, so again we've got another one of the host creatures with a big bow constrictor so for three and a black you get a one two and it's when, whenever the augmented creature enters the battlefield roll a six-sided die target opponent loses like equal to the result so that's really cool especially with the serpentine as well meaning that whenever a land enters the battlefield you get to roll a die to make the player lose life so that's really cool uh, next up we've got Hammer Helper, so for 3 and a red, gain control of target creature until the end of turn, untap that creature and roll a 6 sided die, until the end of turn it gains haste and plus x plus naught where x is the result of the die roll. So again, the dice roll is really interesting, especially that again there were our cards that affect that as well. Uh, next up we've got Steady Handed Monk, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, Steady Handed Mook even. Uh, for 2 and a black it's a 1-1 one, one with death touch. Again, decent enough defender. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it assembles a contraption. So again, that's really cool. Put the top card of your contraption deck face up onto one of your sprockets. So again, that's really cool. I need to figure out, you know, read up definitely a bit more of how the contraptions are working with the sprockets. But this does look really, really fun. Uh, another host creature again with Wild Crocodile. Uh, it definitely looks like black green looks like a very interesting combination at the moment um, but I would love to make a squirrel deck that, that's probably the main thing I'd love to make out of, out of this uh, out of this set so for one and a green it's a 1-1 one, one. so whenever this creature enters the battlefield with the augmenting card there search your library for a basic land card reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your library so that's actually really cool it's a nice way of getting you to help ramp <laughs> Another great piece of artwork here uh, with success. I really do like this. So for one, it's an instant and creature target creature gets plus two, plus two till the end of turn. If it's a host or has an augment, it gains lifelink as well. I mean, I really do like the artwork on that. I think that's really, really cool. 
Uh, again, we've got ourselves another host creature here with uh, Merman. So again, it's for five. It's a three-three, and you know the trigger happens whenever creature, whenever this creature enters the battlefield. You may draw a card. So that's pretty cool there. Uh, willing test subject. This is actually pretty cool as well. Um, so for two and a green, it's a two-two with reach, and I do love the fact it's a monkey crab. I'm not quite sure the what the tail is going to be, but yeah, monkey crab sounds pretty cool. Um, uh, whenever you roll a four or higher on a die, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then you can play. You can you know pay six to yeah, actually roll a die as well. So it could potentially get out of hand by the end of the game. <laughs> So this is something that's actually this is something I've actually quite liked the look of. Uh, so you've got for one the black, you've got yourself a three three with last strike. I mean that's pretty cool. Even just as a blocker, that's still pretty cool because it's still going to take something three power to get rid of it. But I really do like that last strike. It's pretty cool. Uh, so next into the uncommons, we've got staff of the letter magus. Uh, so for three. As it enters the battlefield, choose a consonant other than N, R, S, or T. Whenever a player casts a spell, you gain one life for each time the chosen letter appears in that spell's name. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's just a nice way of interacting a lot more with, with the cards that are going down. Uh, next up, for three and a white, we've got Aerial to uh, Toastmaster. I mean, who doesn't like toast? Probably have that for breakfast, actually. Uh, so we've got a flying 3 2 uh, for 3 and a white sacrifice, another artifact, and aerial toastmaster assembles a contraption. So again, that's that's again, that's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> oh, these the, the artwork on these cards is just really really fun. So we've got Crocs, other thumb uh, for two mana, it's a legendary artifact. If you would roll a die, instead roll two of these dies and ignore the and one of those results. So again, that's where I was talking about earlier, where working with the dice rolls there, you can and end up having you know you can end up choosing the dice roll and make it actually more beneficial to you so that's pretty cool and we've got ourselves a mythic and i might just have to i, I think i'm gonna have to build a deck around this guy now uh, baron von count uh so for one a black and a red it's a three three legendary creature human villain i mean this, this guy this guy's pretty cool so it enters the battlefield with the doom counter on five whenever you cast a spell with the indicated numeral in its mana cost text box power or toughness move down the doom counter one numeral to the left when the doom counter moves from one destroy target player and put that doom counter on five that's so cool that's that so cool i think that has to be that has to be going in into a deck there and uh Again, these 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 artwork for these lands are fantastic, and the swamp is stunning as well. Uh, so again, put the the arts over there. Um, into moving into the contraptions now, we've got quick stick lick trick. <sighs> Can't say that three times faster. Uh, whenever you crank it, uh, target creature gets plus one plus one and gains life linker to the end of turn. That is pretty cool. Uh, applied Aeronautics is another one. So whenever you crank it until the end of turn, target creature gets plus one plus naught and gains flying and becomes an artifact in other types as well. And we've got a gnome token. Oh, these look really, really nice in foil. I really do like the fact that all of these are foil. That gnome token looks pretty cool. And <laughs> you've got a card there on the back there. So you get to color in the image if you really if you really wanted to as well. But that's actually really cool. I do I do like that. But I mean, we're already starting off pretty well here. Baron von Count, so, uh, that's that's fantastic. Very glad to see that. And we still got four boosters to go, so I should probably start rattling through these pretty quickly. Um, capital offense again, no capital letters there. If you didn't notice, uh, for two and two black. Again, at the incident with no capitals, so that's pretty cool. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of times a capital letter appears in its rule text. That's really cool. I love that as a piece of removal. That's great. Just Desserts, uh, for one red, Just Desserts deals pi damage to target creature. Pi is the ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter. It's a smidgen more than three. <laughs> that's great. Uh, Subcontract is up next. So for one, a person outside the game looks to target opponent's hand and chooses a non-land card from it. Then they have to discard that card. Again, I do like that being affecting outside of the game people as well. So that's really cool. Uh, Bumbling Pangolin. I 
think I've got that right. Oh, who knows? Three and a red, you got yourself a 2-2, two, two, and whenever this creature enters the battlefield, or whenever the augmented part aspect of it actually happens, you may destroy target artifact. I do quite like that, especially with the number of artifacts that are in the set. Uh, riveting Rig is up next, so for two and a white, you've got a 2-2 two, two artifact creature. When it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another artifact. If you do, put two plus one plus one counters on it, and it assembles a contraption. That's actually really good value, especially as you can end up turning certain things into artifacts as well. Who doesn't want a crafty octopus? <laughs> oh, this this set's fantastic. Uh, so for two and a blue, you've got yourself a 1-3 host creature again. This creature assembles a contraption whenever um, the aspect of it has actually been fulfilled. So that's really cool. I, I do quite like that. Uh, Joyride Rigger. And for three and a green, you've basically got a uh, chitty chitty bang bang gone wrong, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, so it's a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, it assembles a contraption again. So these contraptions seem to be really, really important to how these, these games end up playing. Another extremely slow zombie there. And now we're into the uncommons. So we've got a buzzing wackadoodle. Who doesn't want a buzzing wackadoodle? Uh, so for four, it's an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, you and opponent each secretly choose whack or doodle. Then those choices are revealed. If the choices match, it has the ability. Otherwise, it has buzz. So if we both end up picking whack, target player loses two life. Doodle, you end up gaining three life. Or if we end up not agreeing, it's pay two, tap it to draw a card. So I do quite like the, the versatility there. Oh, we've got our first part squirrel. This is great. So half square or half, you know, whatever. It could be end up being octopus. Who who knows? That'd be pretty cool. Half square or half octopus. So this will end up being whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield with an augment of one cost. So it's a minus one, minus naught. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, and then, yeah, you end up getting to do whatever the other aspect of it is. So squirrels. Who doesn't like squirrels? So next up, we've got Knight of the Widget. Two and a white. Uh, it's got... Vigilance and its power and toughness is equal to the number of order of the widget watermarks among permanents you control. So again, looking out for those watermarks if you're going to end up creating a deck around that. That's pretty cool. We've got a second Baron von Count. Well, th this is <laughs> this is making my deck choice very easy because at least I know I'm going to get him out. Well, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, another forest one there, so that's that's stunning. We'll put that over there. So yeah, two Baron von Counts. I wonder what we're going to be doing there then. Uh, we've got ourselves Headbanger. Um, so whenever you crank Headbanger, target creature must be blocked this turn if able. That's pretty cool. And a Boom Flinger. Interesting. Um, I wonder how they lit those. But anyway, uh, whenever you crank Boom Flinger, roll two six-sided dice. Boom Flinger deals damage to the target player equal to the difference between those two results. Again, there are other cards that will end up being able to affect those as well, so that's pretty cool. And a Foil Clue Token. Interesting. I wonder if there actually are any clues in here. Or it's just these these are quite random tokens. But they're really cool. I do like that. But yeah, two Baron Von Counts. This is uh, proven to be quite a, quite a simple way of uh, thinking about what we're going to end up building. So we'll see what's going on in the next thing. <laughs> Box of Free Range Goblins. So yeah, roll six-sided die. Again, you've got cards there that'll help affect that. So that's pretty cool. Spell Suck. Oh, no one likes blue anyway, really. Let's face it. Two and two blue. Counter target spell, then assemble a contraction. Yep. Uh, stinging scorpion again. So again, it's an augment creature for four and a black. You get to put this down. Target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one to the end of the turn. It's a three, two, plus the augment on the side of there. So that could prove to be quite painful for nice bits of removal there. Wrench rigger for one cost. It's a one, one. When it enters the battlefield, it assembles a contraption. Again, that's really cool. Wall of fortune again. Uh, ground Pounder, so for one and a green, you've got a 2-2, two, two, roll six sides of dice, plus X plus X, where X is the result. Again, with all the cards that are end up having, you know, changing dice rolls, that could be really, really good. We've got ourselves another host creature here in Numbing Jellyfish. So for three and a blue, a 2-3, so whenever this creature enters the battlefield or any of the other augmented triggers happen, roll a six sided die, target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the result. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Amateur Orchard, I guess that's how you say it. I probably butchered that completely, but let me know in the comments if I have done as well. Uh, one and a white, you got yourself a 2-2. Two, two. Sacrifice to destroy target iron enchantment. That's pretty cool. Uh, Knight of the Kitchen Sink as our first uncommon here. So it's a 2-2 two, two for two white. It's got first strike and protection from black borders. 
that's pretty cool if you end up deciding to put this into any other kind of cube for example or in something along those lines this would be all commander i think because there's a fair few of these now are actually available to be using in commander which i think is actually quite cool as well uh super duper death ray i mean who doesn't want a super super death ray so for two and a red it's a instant that gives trample and it deals four damage to target creatures so that's actually pretty cool because you can deal damage to the creature and the rest of the damage then goes off to the player we've got a monkey who doesn't want a monkey so again uh this will end up working like i said previously with an augmented creature sorry host creature if i can end up finding one quickly yeah the scorpion works so we could have ourselves a monkey scorpion so for four and a black whenever non-token creature you control dies target creature and opponent controls gets minus one minus one to the end of turn augment on top of that so again that's pretty cool and i've just noticed the card that we've got earl of squirrel Yes! Who doesn't... This, this, is, this is my favourite card. This is my favourite card from the entire set. The Earl of Squirrel. I would love to make a Squirrel Commander deck or something along those lines. And this is just really, really cool. So, for 4 and 2 green, it's got Squirrel Link. So, damage dealt by this creature also causes you to create that many 1-1 one, one Squirrel tokens. Amazing! Creatures, uh, Creature tokens you control are Squirrels in addition to their other creature types, which is pretty cool. And other Squirrels you control get plus 1, plus 1. Squirrel anthems, getting more squirrels, doing damage, perfect, absolutely perfect. Got ourselves a swamp again. We seem to like swamps and uh, forests there. So we next up, we've got ourselves a contraption of Lackey Recycler. Whenever you crank it, put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. That's pretty cool to get stuff back. Uh, dictation Quillograph. Uh, whenever you crank Dictation Quillograph, until the end of turn, target creature gains. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card if you do discard a card. So that's, again, a bit more. Nor on a goblin, foil goblin token. That's pretty cool. So, again, Earl of Squirrel. I'm happy. Two Baron Von Dooms and an Earl of Squirrel. This is, this is fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. Again, yeah, do let me know what cards that you know, you're know you wanting to open up in, in this set. It would be really interesting to find out. Uh, steady handed mook again there feisty stegosaurus so you've got a host dinosaur so whenever this creature enters the battlefield roll a six sided die this creature deals damage equal to the result to target creature and opponent controls that's pretty cool it's quite expensive at the top end there but you can end up making it worth your while uh, chipper chopper three and a blue one one flyer enters the battlefield may sacrifice another artifact if you do put two one one counters on it and it assembles a contraption on top so that could definitely be worth the while we've got another host creature it's a camel amazing uh camels are cool not quite as cool as llamas llamas are definitely my favorite animal but camels are pretty cool um for three and a white we've got ourselves a three three whenever this creature enters the battlefield all the augmented trigger happens creatures you control get plus one plus one to the end of turn that's actually pretty strong that's pretty strong. A willing test subject again. Uh, we've got ourselves a artifact version of a uh, host creature here in uh, Voracious Vacuum. That's an evil vacuum cleaner. Fair play. Uh, for three cost, it's a 1-1. One, one, and whenever this creature enters the battlefield or the trigger happens from an augmented creature, if you've got one on top, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That's pretty cool as well, especially if you end up using the green version to, you know, whenever a land enters play. <laughs> Beast in show. <laughs> oh that's fantastic so for four and two green is a six forward trample that's just a solid card there uh over operative is our first uncommon from this pack for three and a black it's got uh two three with menace and whenever it deals combat damage to a player it assembles a contraption that's again pretty cool i do like these we've got ourselves another monkey host there that's pretty cool um more or less uh so for one blue it's an instant add or subtract one uh or one from a number or Sorry, add or subtract one or one from a number of number word on target spell or permanent until the end of turn. Oh, okay. So you can take one away from the mana cost of something, I guess, or you can take away just any part of a spell. That's actually really cool. I love the artwork for this as well. Um, yeah, that's actually really, really cool. Uh, we've got ourselves an enchantment for our rare. It's Over My Dead Bodies. So for four and two black, creature cards in graveyards can attack and block as though they were on the battlefield. Can black or block or be blocked only by creature cards in graveyards are zombies in addition to their other types and have undeath touch. If they would deal damage to a creature card, exile that creature card instead. <laughs> creature cards in your graveyard have haste. Oh my god, that's amazing. That's really cool. Another swamp again. 
we've got ourselves a foil contraption now. I'm actually really excited to play that. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Um, applied Aeronautics. So we've got an artifact contraption here. When you crank it until the end of turn, target creature gets plus one, plus not flying, and becomes an artifact. That looks really sweet in foil. Really nice in foil. Uh, optical Optimizer. Whenever you crank it until the end of the turn, creature becomes an artifact in addition to all the other types, and you can tap it to draw a card. So again, that's really cool. And Sap Sucker. Uh, whenever you crank it, add a green to your mana pool. Until the end of the turn, this mana doesn't empty from your mana pool as steps and phases end. That's cool. And a goat. Who doesn't want a goat token? Goat. That's amazing. So yeah, we're, we're very much being set down the green-black route by the looks of it, with a bit of splash for red, because Baron Von Doom has to be in here. So, last pack to open up. Uh, let's see what we've got inside. And yeah, once we finish doing this, I'll have to I'll sort out all the piles, and then we'll have to go away and create a deck, because that was part of the challenge, so we'll see what we end up getting. We've got Spell Stuck again. Stinging Scorpion's really nice to have. A Wrench Rigger, 1 for 1-1, one, one, enters the battlefield, assembles a contraption. Really epic punch. Yes. So for one and a green, target creature you control gets plus two, plus two. If it's a host or has an augment, then it fights target creature you don't control. That's really cool. And who doesn't want who doesn't want to give one of their creatures a really epic punch? We've got ourselves a humming version of the uh, augment here. So whenever you attack with two or more creatures, something will end up happening. And it'll give it flying as well. That's really cool. Defective Detective. That doesn't sound like they're very good at their job. Um, so for 2-1, can't be blocked. When it enters the battlefield, a person outside the game looks at a target opponent's hand, chooses a card from it, and then reveals that card. Actually, that's pretty cool. Squirrel Dealer! Yes! So for 1-1, one, one, it's a, gr a green 1-1 one, one for 1. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, ask a person outside the game, do you like squirrels? If, if he or she does, create a green squirrel token. So you could have two power for one cost. I mean, let's be fair, everyone's going to say they like squirrels. We've got oh, that's an alternate artwork for Beast in Show. That's actually really cool that there's more than one art for this. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, six four trample for six, that's cool. Uncommon, you've got Teacher's Pet. So for one and a white, you've got yourself a 2-1 Cat Bird Scientist. And of course, they're looking at fish. Why not? Uh, two and a white, sacrifice it, search a library, uh, library for a card with augment, combine it with a target host you control, then shuffle your library. That's actually pretty cool. It just means that, again, the, the combining cost will be a lot cheaper. Squirrel powered scheme. Yes. Again, it's got to go in there because it's got squirrels in it. Uh, for two and a black, is another enchantment. Increase the result of each die you roll by two. That's really cool. I approve of that. I approve of that. Again, we've got more or less. And our last rare is better than one. So for green and a white as a sorcery, a person outside your game becomes your teammate. That's really, really cool. So you can choose any number of cards in your hand, on top of your library, or on the battlefield under your control. Those cards become your teammate's hand, library, and permanence respectively. That's actually really, really cool because then you can end up having, you know, twice the number of people playing on your side, dealing more damage to your opponent. They've got to kind of deal with more things going on at the same time, and it just gets people more involved. I like that. Mountain looks really nice as well. Uh, then we've got Oaken Power Suit. It's got a squirrel in it. Might have to be used for sure. It's a rare one as well. Whenever you crank it, target creature gets plus X, plus X until the end of turn, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. That's pretty cool. Uh, Sundering Fork is the next one. So whenever you crank it, destroy target artifact. Again, there's a lot of artifacts in this. This should be great. And a construct token. Yeah, this looks pretty cool in foil again. But knowledge is power on the back. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So yeah, no, I'm 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 more than happy. I am more than happy with <laughs> what we've opened up here. So I will go away now. I'll put everything into piles and I'll go away and see what we can end up making from a deck. So I have to admit that was got to be one of the most fun deck building experience I've ever had from just a sealed pool. I mean, to be perfectly honest, once we'd opened up a couple of this guy, I mean, Baron Von Count, it was, it's a really, really cool card. I love the way that it's interacting as well. And I just had to do a build around it, especially seeing as we got two of them. It just, it, ha it had to be done. So, um, yeah, as you can probably tell, uh, the, the deck's all over a bit a little bit all over the place um in terms of the colors i mean we're splashing blue just for 
the card more or less here purely down to the fact that he's got the number one on it it's got the number five on it there to, to interact with baron there plus it means that i can interact as well with the other numbers as they're coming in at instant speed as well so i can make sure i'm hitting the numbers that i want um but no after overall after uh Working everything out because there was, there was, a, there was more maths involved with this than there was with any other deck I've ever, ever built. But we've made sure that because with Baron Von Count here, uh, you need to be able to cast a five cost spell after you've put him out. Four, then a three, then it's, well, it's not five cost, sorry, it's either five, either in the casting cost, mana cost, text, power, or toughness. Uh, to be able to get him his doom counted down and down and down and down. So realistically, what I've got. At this moment in time with the deck that i've built here with the cards that i managed to open up we've got uh five ways of getting the number five again more or less is going to help us with that being one cost there plus you know if later on down the line as well there are other ways of getting five i believe it's with ground pounder um i will just grab him and double check apologies for this i believe it's ground pounder um yeah, so you've got a 1 on here, a 2, a 5, or a 3 as well, which is pretty cool. So that's helping enable us get those 5s. Sorry, I just moved that back to where it was. Um, I'm making an absolute mess of this now, but never mind, eh? Um, so yeah, we've got 4 ways of getting a 5. Uh, 7 ways of getting the number 4. Again, it's got a couple of other ways added on top as well. as well. There's more ways with more or less on top of there as well. Uh, 8 ways to, again to get a number 3. And... 10 to get a number two and 14 ways to get the number one again those the two three and the four value will all change purely down to the fact that more or less i'll be able to help us get that number if we say for example we need number four but we've only got a number five well we can subtract one number from there as well or if you've only got a three and need to get to a four we can push that number up as well so there are ways of interacting with that as well but i just thought that this was a really really cool card to be able to build around Plus, we've got a couple other things in in here. So we've got uh, Cracks Other Thumb there and Squirrel Powered Scheme. So these are the ways that I'm able to interact with dice. Uh, I'll just grab these up for us now. Uh, so yeah, Cracks Other Thumb, not only does it give us an, uh, a 1 and a 2 for Baron Von, uh, Von Count there, but it just means if you roll a die instead, roll two of them and ignore you can just pick one value so again most of the time you end up picking the highest and then with squirrel power scheme increase the result of each die you roll by two so again that's going to help us really push the values up there so that hypothetically later on down the line if this gets in focus there we go uh box of free range goblins i kind of had to put this in just for the, for the dice rolling effect there uh roll a six-sided dice creates that many tokens so again if you've got two dice to be able to roll that to create more tokens plus adding two on there potentially you could get eight goblins for the for the six costs there potentially uh and to be perfectly honest um yeah earl of squirrel is in here because earl of squirrel that, that that's the only reason I, I just had to put him in the deck to be honest i mean making everything else squirrels buffing everything up as well works them with the tokens on top it, it's just such a really really cool card and I really do want to make a squirrel commander deck. I think that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, uh, the squirrel had to had to come in here. And the other thing that really works nicely with the dice rolling, uh, apart from ground pounder making him bigger, willing to set test subject again making him bigger, uh, was the big boa constrictor. Now you get to roll a six sided die. Target opponent loses life equal to the result. Again, that's affected by the other thumb and the powered scheme on top. Plus, if you can then use, say, Serpentine or Half Squirrel, Half Constrictor there, you can then get either when a land enters the battlefield with Serpentine, or I believe it's whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, whether that's yours or theirs, will end up triggering that off as well. So you could potentially just, you know, get your opponent down to zero through the use of the Boa Constrictor there and the dice rolling, just to be able to give another kind of win condition. So you've got Earl of Squirrel there as a win condition with tokens. We've got ourselves uh, the Boa Constrictor and the dice rolling to be able to potentially get one. And we've also again got Baron Von Count as our main win condition there. But I'm so, so glad to have, uh, have opened this. And I'm so thankful to uh, Dan over at Wizards Coast for sending me over these booster packs. I mean, it's been so much fun to actually open these up, have a look through all the cards, because to be perfectly honest i hadn't actually spent that much time looking at the set because because i plainly play cube um I, you know there was it wasn't as much of an interest to me as i first thought 
I might end up making an uncube. I think that's going to be something that would be quite fun to do. So taking cards from various different sets and putting them into a cube. But obviously with those cards now being available for Commander, it might make it a little bit more expensive. We'll just, ha we'll just have to wait and see. But this, this is a hell of a lot of fun. And I can only imagine what it would be like drafting this set and playing this set with a load of other people as well. So definitely, if this interests you as well... Um, Definitely go down to your local game store uh, on release day. Go and have a draft with this because I reckon it's be loads of fun with friends. Or grab a booster box and play with your mates at home. Just re I would definitely really suggest having given this a go. Just as a fun way to be playing Magic that isn't standard or isn't modern Commander and so on and so forth. Plus there are some great cards here now that are available for Commander that you can end up picking up some really cool cards and putting them into those decks as well. So yeah, I'm so very, very glad that... The Wizards of Coast sent over these cards. I mean, there's so many others as well. I love the basic lands in here as well. So again, you can see there's, the deck's got two islands, five mountains, five swamps, and six forests. There's its mana pool again. There are, you can end up mixing and matching, maybe take a couple cards out as well, as long as the, the maths are able to be kind of, you know, helpful towards you to be able to make sure that you're actually hitting the number count for Baron Von Count there. But no, I'm so, so glad that Wizards sent over the cards not only to me but to other uh, UK Magic content creators as well because it's really nice to see that you know that other channels are actually getting involved and actually being able to get some of these products as well uh, not just the big boys so that's that was really nice to see and uh, hopefully in the future again something else like this can happen again but again I'm so so thankful for Wizards for sending over these uh, booster packs for me and I'm so glad to be able to actually share this with you and this was a really really fun challenge as well so thank you again so much for watching and let me know in the comment section what cards you're looking for from this set you know are you looking forward to playing it as well I really would be interested to know and you know you know thank you again so much for watching and thanks again to wizards for doing this for me i would just like to take this moment to thank my patreons of the channel i can't thank you enough for the help and support that you're giving me if you'd like to do the same head over to patreon.com forward slash life begins at 20 and there'll be a link in the description below for that as well where there are plenty of rewards to choose from with your support we can really push to make this channel even better be sure to check out our sponsor, 5 for a great range of Magic the Gathering accessories with stunning artwork, plus a great app to draft and create decks on the fly. Use the referral code LIFEBEGINS20 for 5% off. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. With your support, we can really help this channel to grow. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.